here is our five stage map. I'll give it a quick sweep so you can see from the top up here where we have the uppermost level meta beliefs. This is where we chunk up. This is the zone of chunking up. This is what we would call the ego state, sort of the resting state, or the default state of the mind. Uh, you won't find this in most uh, NLP thinking. You won't find this in NLP books or seminars. But I will propose that the ego state has numerous possibilities. The ego state can be very open. It can be very expanded. So someone that has a very expanded ego state, you might say a, an ego state that encompasses a great deal of what may be unconscious for other people. Uh, that person, you might say, has a, um, an expanded or an awakened ego state. Someone who has a very constricted or narrow or small ego state, maybe only seeing, seeing through their senses and seeing through their mind, because we do see through both, both methods. We, there are sort of two levels of perception, two levels of understanding. So someone whose perceptions and understandings at the mental level as well as, well as the perceptual level that is stuck or constricted or constrained into a very tiny little spot. They see very little, they hear very little, they perceive very little, they get very little. As someone who is um, trapped in a, in a very narrowed ego state. And as our work progresses, the ego state will open up to, to greater areas that were previously unconscious or only accessible through effort um, or were difficult for that person to obtain or enter into. Uh, down here, we have the area of chunking down where we're looking at very specific things. We're having uh, perceptual sharpening and perceptual attunement of the visual, the auditory, the kinesthetic, the olfactory and gustatory, and the vestibular system, which has a few a um, few extra details to it. And down here we have what we would call the area of pre-conscious processing or infraconsciousness. This is an area that perhaps is accessible to yogis or to some kind of meditative masters, but probably would not be included in consciousness very well or only faintly included in consciousness and even someone with what we would consider to have a very enlarged ego state. So, what we will do is uh, go back here to the ego state and quickly think about where different branches of NLP um, tend to operate from. Um, Bandler's NLP here tends to connect the upchunked area of abstract representations and maps, and that tends to connect uh, that with a highly specific, um, highly specific internal imaging and highly specific awareness of internal representation, the very finely chunked down internal V-A-K-O-G, the stuff in the mind, is connected with the abstract chunked up. So Bandler's work, the thing that makes, say, getting to Bandler consciousness or Bandler goal is to connect the chunked up region with the chunked down region, which may be one way of expanding the ego state, perhaps uh, perfectly, perhaps imperfectly, I don't know. But that's how that's going to pretty much work. Erickson wanted to connect what I believe is the uppermost region of meta-beliefs. So Erickson would aim to link what was happening in the area of how people thought about their thinking. So Erickson would use hypnotic technique to give people entirely new ways to think about their thinking and, in, and then connect that to the, the present ego state. So in a way, you could say Erickson had a strategy for expanding the ego state, utilizing hypnotic tools, which would cause such profound changes of internal perception and per profound changes of awareness that people would start to rethink how they believed things and how they went about having beliefs. 
John Grinder over here. Grinder is connecting what we would call in his, his new code ideas the area very much the area of pre-conscious processing probably uh, an area that has a lot to do with a region of the brain called the cerebellum connecting that up with the ego 